Hi everyone, today we got the awesome announcement of Splatoon 3 Season 2, or Chill Season as they're calling it, but really it's just kind of Season 2, and it looks absolutely phenomenal. So today I wanted to do a quick analysis of it, and then talk about the things that I like and dislike about it. So yeah, let's just get into it. So from the opening to about 019 in the video, we see this new map, and it looks absolutely beautiful. I was expecting the Desert Temple map, but seeing a new Inkopolis-based map designed from the ground up for Splatoon 3 is really great too. I think this is the first time we've actually seen a Sage designed around older Japanese architecture, and with Splatoon being set in Japan, that makes it even cooler to see. From 021 to 024, we get a look at some new weapons, including a new Splattershot Pro that looks absolutely awesome. Hey, so quick update, this gun isn't actually what I thought it was originally, it turns out it's a totally different type of shooter. So as of recording, all we have is the Google translated tweet from uh, the Splatoon Japanese Twitter account, and it probably is called the Space Shooter, and it's a weapon that is best described in Pro Charis tweet, because I really just have a hard time understanding what is going through Google Translate, because it's awful. Basically, he described it as trying to do something that the dual squelcher from Splatoon 1 did, but hopefully better. And, um, honestly, I was not a big Splatoon 1 person. I didn't own Splatoon 1 until a few months ago, so uh, take with that what you will. I really do not know for sure. Dapple Dualies, a new Luna Blaster, new Splatter Shot, Splat Laying Roller, and the new Charger type that we'll talk in depth about later. At 028, we see the new Tenetech Splatter Shot has Splat Bombs once again, which is really nice. I'm not really a big fan of the whole Suction Bomb and Splatter Shot thing. Okay, let's talk about the new Charger. So, it looks like it's got a 3 second charge time and is able to store 5 charges, seemingly doing 50 damage each. This is going to be an issue if it plays like a Charger. If this Charger is meant to be played like a ranged weapon, like a normal Splat Charger is, then being able to store 5 charges is gonna hurt. However, I'm hoping this weapon is supposed to be played like something like a DMR from Halo. It's a one-shot burst weapon that doesn't take that many shots to kill and is meant to have a bit more range than close range. Not really medium range, but a bit further than close. If so, this weapon is going to be a lot of fun and fills a slot that for some reason hasn't been filled yet. I think when Chill Season drops, this weapon is not going to be fun to fight against until it gets balanced, but I think it might be a little more balanced out by the fact that this thing is most likely going to have absolutely horrendous ink coverage. So, if this weapon is made to be played at long range, this thing needs to have a really long charge time, like E-Leader or higher in my opinion. I think 3 seconds might be a bit short, I think maybe a second and a half longer could be a little better, but that is a little nitpicky. From what we see, it's being used at an in-between range like I described earlier, so hopefully that's the best range to use it. If so, I think we're in for a pretty good weapon that honestly excites me quite a bit. Next, we see the return of Flounder Heights, and for being a returning Splatoon 1 map, it shockingly is not looking very destroyed. It's a returning map, so my feelings are pretty neutral on it, but I know it's an exciting map for a lot of people. Not my cup of tea, but exciting to have more variety nonetheless. That's right, Rank X is back. Honestly, pretty surprised X came back so quickly. I thought it was going to come back in like Season 3, but nope, Nintendo just jumped on this one pretty quickly. So at 131, you've got a blink and you miss it moment, but when we get into the big run segment, we get a quick flash of the Book of Madai Sunken Scroll, which is really interesting and sheds some light on the prophecy we saw back in Splatoon 2. So we can now infer that the Book of Madai with the prophecy with the seven rings and the smoke rising and the salmonids coming to land is about big run which we can kinda see with the skybox for the big run event, being that the skybox here looks more apocalyptic than the Splatocalypse skybox did. So, after five years, we finally have an answer to the Book of Madai, and it's not just some salmonid folklore, it's about an actual invasion. We get our first look at the new big run themed square, we can see the Grisco helicopter flying around, Honestly, I'm a little disappointed, I was expecting a bit more from this version of the square, but maybe when we get to see the full thing in-game, it'll look a little better than what we saw. Also, it is confirmed that Big Run will take place on Wahoo World, at least for the first one, and I think that we all need to agree that if it's possible to allow the Salmonids to take a map, if we can fail a Big Run, we should just let them take Wahoo World. But besides that, it looks like Wahoo might actually function well as a Salmon Run map. Big Run's been getting criticized lately for looking like a port of Salmon Run to normal battle stages, but at least for me as a lore enthusiast, I think the prospect of that sounds super cool and interesting. We get to see that night modes will be happening in Big Run as well as normal boss hunting. King Salmonid battles happen too, and the Salmon Run Seaside remix goes way too hard. 
But yeah, that's it for the trailer. I've got some things that I want to talk about regarding my potential hopes for this season, as well as some things I like and dislike, because it's not a Rizzy video if I don't endlessly criticize my favorite game. So to start off the things that I'm not too thrilled about, I'm really not happy that we still don't have online table turf. So table turf as one of the three only new modes to Splatoon 3, the other two being uh, Tricolor Turf War and Big Run. Having one of the only new modes not being able to just not only play online, but also not playable like locally is just really stupid. And the fact that we're going to probably be waiting till like, I don't know, spring to be able to do that is just really not something I'm happy about, especially as someone who has just absolutely fallen in love with table turf battle. I really wish that getting table turf online was a higher priority for Nintendo instead of doing something like bringing X battles in faster. And speaking of X battles, I really don't like that they brought X battles in before League, and this is a personal preference thing for me. I never got to rank X because I'm too bad at this game, but personally, I was a much bigger fan of League battle. League battle was always a lot of fun, and for me personally, I thought it was a really great way to earn a lot of XP really quickly so it not being in still is not something i really am happy about the last thing i'm not too thrilled about but it's more of a nitpick and something that'll probably come sooner than later is another new king salmonid so i really just think that like with big run coming we should get introduced to a new king salmonid considering that by the time we get big run it'll probably be like three and a half months since splatoon 3 came out and i just think at that point since they were kind of hinting at more king salmonids coming you know, Big Run would be the best place to introduce a new King Salmonid. Why not go all out and introduce a new one at the start of the first Big Run? But that's really my last criticism. The things that I really loved here is the new map. I absolutely adore this new map. I think it looks beautiful. One of my biggest concerns with Splatoon 3 launching was that it wouldn't have like enough nature-y maps to say, in the sense that like all of the, I thought a lot of the outdoor maps were gonna be based around the desert. And really, there just aren't enough maps based around the desert, which they'll be fixing when they add that desert temple map. But this new, like, temple map looks so cool, and I absolutely love it, and I cannot stress that enough. I'm also really happy about heights not being absolutely destroyed, like maps like Mahi Mahi and Hammerhead Bridge were. That was probably the biggest concern most of the community had about heights coming back, and to see that it's, like, relatively intact is really nice and i'm just happy nintendo didn't screw it all up also cannot stress enough how happy i am that splattershot has swat bombs again i really did not like having suction bomb with it i feel like i'm a lot better with splat bombs than i am suction bomb and as a splattershot main it just makes me really happy to know that my favorite bread and butter gun is going to be getting a bread and butter bomb to make my life even easier but yeah, I think that's about it from this video. I honestly, if I had to rate this trailer, I'd probably give it like an 8 out of 10 for uh, the reasons I listed in this video. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this trailer. Are you guys excited for chill season? I know I most certainly am. Also, comment down below on when you think we're going to get the first big run. Personally, my idea is Christmas. And yeah, that's about it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And yeah, alright gamers, that's it for me. See ya.